can become death. Trivia question. Who's the longest reigning heavyweight champion in Louisville, Kentucky history? Is it Cody Rhodes? Is it John Cena? It's Rocco Bellagio. The longest reigning heavyweight champion in this city's history. There ain't nothing that's any different at the Norton Center. I understand that, look, one should not think too much of himself, but I'm Pope, and I know who the hell I am. You want to be put over? Well, Pope's going to do just that for you tonight, because I'm going to raise you up a couple of notches just to knock your butt back down, just to remind you exactly who Pope is. The Destroyer of Worlds. Place to see it. Hello, everyone, from the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center. I'm Gilbert Corsi, alongside Sean Phillips, and you're watching United Wrestling Network action. Sean, we come on with a huge main event tonight. The Pope, Elijah Burke, will be squaring off against Rocco Bellagio. And you know, I never would have thought that I'd say that I thought that Pope was going to have a hard time here in the United Wrestling Network. But now he's going up against one of the hometown heroes, Rocco Bellagio. He's going up against eight foot. 300 pounds of pure muscle, pure aggression. We are in for a very special treat tonight. Eight feet, eight feet? That's that's cutting it short, too. Well, Rocco Bellagio wants to work his way back to a United World title shot, and the committee has said that he got to, he's got to go through all the top competitors here in the United Wrestling Network. Thus, our main event. Rocco and Pope are friends, but tonight they will be foes in the squared circle. Let's get to the action. is a singles match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, from Phoenix, Arizona, weighing 195 pounds, the Emperor Bryce Saturn. Emperor Bryce Saturn making his Derby City wrestling debut. Last time that we saw Saturn, he was on the receiving end of several deaths from above from Bateman. He's apparently uh, come east after that experience, Sean. <laughs> Absolutely. opponent from Cocoa Beach, Florida, weighing in at 223 pounds, the outlandish Zicky Dice. Outlandish, and there's a lot of other things you could, words you could use to describe Zicky Dice. Untamed, ill-tempered, bizarre, bold. What do you got? I, I don't even have words. Like, outlandish covers such a, a, a huge, margin of what this guy is. Zicky Dice is something that I've never seen before, and I don't know yet if it's a good thing or a bad thing. You don't know if you like it or not? <laughs> I, I just can't tell. I can never it's, get the grasp it's on It's an it. anomaly all itself. That is Zicky Dice. Let me put it this way. There is no other Zicky Dice in the world. This guy is one of one, 120%. Dice, a uh, former Heritage Champion here in the United Wrestling Network. Be a good opening contest here, Zicky Dice and Bryce Saturn. You know, and Zicky Dice has a lot to prove here. He's he's been on he's been on a mission to assemble that crew for himself, and it just hasn't gone, I think, the way that he wanted it to. And now he gets to step huh? in the ring here with What's Bryce Satter to take on a little bit of that frustration. Yeah, Dice is trying to is trying to find some allies, perhaps uh, insurance policies to stand by his side, and Bryce Satter is bringing the fight here in this opening contest, I should say. Explosive clothesline from the Emperor. Putting dice on his heels. And it's nice to see the Emperor here with a little bit of energy. You know, when we saw him in the United Wrestling Network before, he wasn't necessarily a fan favorite, but he wasn't doing anything to get their approval either. I've talked to him since. Now that he's here at Derby City, he is excited, he is motivated to turn a new leaf and to bring it to Derby City Wrestling. Saturn known for a trio, part of Final Destination. 
broken away now and going at it in singles competition now in Derby City Wrestling. A little bit too much showboating just cost him there as Zicky Dice has him up for a stunned suplex. Look at this. Shades of the late great British Bulldog. All the blood rushing to the head of Bryce Saturn. What goes up must come down. A physics lesson from the outlandish one. He can only find two. And I think, like we said, Zicky was going to take some frustration out. But it looks like now he's got to he's got to get his uh, 15 seconds here in front of the camera. There's a reason that we call him outlandish. As he sends Bryce Saturn right to Saturn out of his world with that throw. In some places that would be a disqualification, just right over the top rope. You know the thing is though, even if he had been disqualified, I don't think it would have mattered to Zicky Dice. He was not going to stop doing what he's about to do right here as he sends Bryce Saturn right into the ring. Oh. Somebody's a free Dice not now. afraid to cut corners. Not afraid to break a few rules. Bryce Saturn with a little bit of life trading shots here with Zicky Dice on the outside. Well, this is, but here's the thing. For Bryce Saturn, a major opportunity now. As he debuts on the on the Derby City roster, taking on the United Mainstay and Zicky Dice, a former Heritage Champion, which whether you like him or not, Zicky is a top competitor. I never said I didn't like him. See, I you just, said you I, didn't know. I don't know because I can't tell what Zicky Dice is. This guy's out of his mind, and I, I <laughs> there's days I love it, there's days I hate it. But today, I'm just more worried about what's going to happen to Bryce if Zicky can get back on top. If I'm Bryce Sadler, I'm trying to take this fight back into the ring. I don't want to be on the floor with a guy like Zicky Dice. I wouldn't be surprised if Zicky had planted something underneath the ring. This exactly. Time. Exactly. Case in point. Case in point. And pulling some outlandish moves there, busting the rope as Bryce Saturn was attempting to get in. Busting something else, too. Absolutely. Boots to the back of Bryce Saturn. And it's a momentum shifting moment in this match. And this is the last place that Bryce Saturn wants to be. Oh. Zicky Dice getting in the driver's seat yeah. of this match here. Make sure you're telling the truth, boys. I'm not sure what truth Dice yelling at us to make sure we tell him the truth. I think that everything we've said is factual. Cover, no hook of the leg, and the outlandish one with the cocky cover on Bryce Saturn. Ooh. I think that everything we've said about Zicky Dice so far has been true. Absolutely. If you don't believe us, we have quite the library on, on YouTube. Go back and watch some United Wrestling action. Another giant open palm slap from Zicky Dice to the chest of Bryce Saturn, who runs right into what was. This is, uh, I don't know if he's got it sunk in all the way. It looks like it could be a sleeper. He needs to get the arm underneath the chin and then float the other arm over the top to cut off the blood flow to the carotid artery. Nonetheless, may not be in all the way, but it is effective, or at least was effective for one Bryce Saturn. Bryce Saturn bringing him down after that. Could have been neck crank. Now here's the energy. Couple of running forearms here. Bryce Saturn has some life again. The Emperor with a flurry of offense here for the outlandish one, Zicky Dice. And it kept and Saturn up. is trying to go to the pay window here. Could this be it for outlandish Zicky Dice? Play two. is hooked. But Dice is out in two. You know what I like about Bryce Saturn here is he's staying on top of Zicky Dice, which is exactly what you have to do. Too many times these younger, inexperienced individuals are just... Hold on here. He no. may have enough for a victory. Not quite, but here's, here's what he can't do. He can't look at the ref. Bryce needs to get over it and get back on top of Zicky. I agree with you wholeheartedly. you got to stay on the press, stay on top of the fight. Again, this would be a tremendous win for the career of Bryce Saturn in the United Wrestling Network. Pop up and down. Bryce Saturn about touched the roof here of the Norton Healthcare Learning Center. This might be it for Bryce Saturn. As he Zicky's is. sending Saturn night night. And you can see the lights are fading for one Bryce Saturn. Go to sleep, says Zicky Dice. And that's it. That's it. And a message sent as Zicky Dice stares down the camera. Here is your winner.
Taylor, Zicky Dice. The pride and joy of Cocoa Beach, Florida, with a victory here in the United Wrestling Network. We'll be back after this. I love to drive. It's my me time, my getaway, my escape. Nothing can ruin it, except for a car breakdown. That's why I called CarShield. CarShield administrators help get those repairs paid. I trust CarShield with my baby, and you should too. CarShield has plans that include protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, entertainment system, air conditioning, electronics, and more. CarShield administrators go the extra mile by including rental car options. You also get emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and courtesy towing all at no additional cost. Darlings, saving on expensive car repairs is just a phone call away. For me, it's a no-brainer. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in costs for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantees. Call 800-284-5872. One West is about opportunity. One West is about honoring our community. One West is about economic development within the West End. From where I've gone to where I am now, there's no way possible without One West that I'll be there. One West is about revitalization. One West building together. And I asked to talk to my best friend right now, Nikki Midas. Seven years ago, where were we at? Seven years ago, I was just starting out. I was nervous every match. And you were the one that telling me, hey, you got this, bro. And just like we said that, last week we went out there, whether we were on the same side of the post or not. There are rankings here, and every win matters, friend or not. And we put it all on the line, because that's what we do. Putting the student away. I want to help you out now, just like you did me. Maybe we can get the band back together. The following contest is a tag team match scheduled for one fall. Introducing first from St. Louis, Missouri, with a combined weight of 465 pounds, Raheem De La Suede, the deliverer, Moses Technical Difficulty. This is a fun team to watch. They're the kind of team that's got springs in their feet, Sean Phillips. Absolutely young upstarts. These guys were born and bred, trained by the late, great Harley Race. And we're about to see some technical prowess from technical difficulties. of 375 pounds, Mickey Midas, the young goat, Myron Reed, the Brotherhood. Well, these two men squared off last time we saw them in the United Wrestling Network, but they are better known around the Derby City as a tag team, better known as a brotherhood, Sean. Absolutely, some brotherly love, some brotherly fists were thrown in their last matchup against one another. But you know what? That tussle led them right here for an opportunity to debut as a tag team at Derby City Wrestling. And that's really where I give credit to the committee because the committee doesn't shy away from making whatever match it believes the fans deserve. Myron and Mickey are two phenomenal athletes and they wondered what would it be like if they weren't side by side? What would it be like if they were toe to toe? And it was a, a tremendous matchup. Absolutely, one that Myron Reed got the better of. But you know what, they are putting that behind them. Right now they are focused on the task at hand which is technical difficulties. And we're gonna see that again tonight in our main event when friends, Pope and Rocco Bellagio go one on one because Rocco wants another world title shot and the committee said that 
he must take on all the top competitors in the United Wrestling Network. And Pope is certainly there, but that is a drop kick on the butt of the jaw. And absolutely, Raheem De La Suede brings it to Myron Reed. These are guys that have very similar styles. I think Raheem might just have a little bit more suede, but the funk sway from Myron Reed takes the boot to the side. I tell you what, that Myron Reed is one of the most gifted young competitors that I have seen in the squared circle in a very long time. And this, and this right here is showing that these guys operate great as a tag team tandem. I would say all four of these guys in this ring have a great future in this business, and right now we're getting to see him here. Smooth like butter and a hot skillet into the press. Mickey Midas can only find two. The breath taken out of Raheem De La Suede. Shot right to the stomach. He better take him away from the deliverer. Moses, who gets the tag, the ref has seen it. Difficulties now. Shoulders on the mat. Mickey's out in two. Trip and a flip. Almost tripping up over our referee sure, here. Sure. The tag has been made. I don't know if the ref saw it. He did. I don't know if Mickey saw it. And if he didn't, he knows now. A crossbody from De La Sway, two, but a kick out from Midas. Mickey and Myron, longtime friends, a mentee mentor type relationship when the uh, Students surpassed the teacher last time. Mickey trained Myron, but it was Myron who gained victory cover here when they squared off last time. So now we have them back together as a tag team. And I gotta wonder if that singles match weighs into the back of their mind or if they will focus now on climbing the tag team ranks. To another near fall here. And, kick out. and you know what? A lot of people might think that that would have something, that now these guys might have a little bit of bad blood behind them. But I don't think that's the case. These guys are two individuals that have worked together for so long. I don't think that a couple of bumps and bruises is really going to deter their relationship. And another tag right here. Moses. With a little bit of fight from Mickey Midas right here. A mule-style dropkick plants Mickey Midas in the turnbuckle. And a kip up from Moses, bringing him up top on his shoulders. Raheem De La Suede going up top. Mickey Midas slipping out. Step up in Seguri. And the tag is still it's not a legal tag. I mean, I think he was standing on the top rope there. You know what, if the ref doesn't mind, I don't think those two are going to. Big shot, but a boot in from Myron. Mickey able to make the tag, and here comes Myron Reed, who's been chopping on the bit on the outside of the ring. Myron, a 400-plus day reign as the MLW World Middleweight Champion. I mean, this guy is just nitro. He is exciting. There is a reason that they call him the Young Goat. And he is bringing it to the deliverer, Moses, catching the feet, swinging him outside, and a boot to the back of the neck of the deliverer. It's hard to call his matches because Myron Reed moves so quickly. Blake Lariat to the back of the head. The shoulders are on the mat. But Myron can only find two. Not a whole lot of wrestling, but a whole lot of acrobatics. Might just be what Myron needs to take down technical difficulties. Hold on, what's the Brotherhood got in mind here? It looks like Mickey doesn't get all of it. But I don't think it matters here. This is classic Brotherhood. <laughs> Myron Reed soars through the air. And the young goat. Holding on to Part technical difficulties. What is this? Asai style moonsault from Mickey Midas. Now these guys are brotherhood and part birds. The Brotherhood is fired up. They've got this crowd here at the Norton Healthcare Learning Center fired up as well. Taking the deliverer Moses back into the ring. Technical difficulties better figure something out before it's too late. Brotherhood could be sensing victory here. No low road for Mickey Midas. Myra Reed connects with the super kick. Perhaps not realizing that his tag team partner has been taken out. Leaps up to that top rope. It stopped in his tracks. Myra eats up. Boom. Oh. And that might just do it here. Wow. Cover here. And two, two. Is that three? Is that three? Oh, Mickey got the.
there. I don't think I've ever seen a near fall that close. Two and nine, nine, nine. That might have been the closest near fall I've ever seen. I almost want to see it back. I thought it was upset city. I thought the technical difficulties had the upset here against the Brotherhood, and they may. Indeed. And we are trading super kicks here in the ring, and Myron Reed planting to the face of Raheem De La Suede. This is a super kick symphony from the Brotherhood. Taking Raheem up on the ropes. Springboard into the consistent cutter, and that is going to do it. Here is your winner, the Brotherhood. Let's take another look at a flurry of action in this tag team contest. Your One West Derby City Rewind. The springs in Myron Reed's feet are absolutely incredible. But in the end, it was tag team maneuvering that got the job done. And Myron Reed and Mickey Midas are on the same page in the Brotherhood. What a win here on Derby City Wrestling. If you're afraid to offend, you can't be honest. That's Thomas Paine, a leader in the American Revolution. CarShield, America's most trusted auto protection company, spells out what's protected in coverage plans for your vehicle. If your vehicle is out of warranty, all you have to do is call before your car breaks down. CarShield preserves your right to save on repairs or replacements for major parts and systems, while protecting your freedom to choose your mechanic or dealer for one affordable pay-as-you-go rate a rate that will never go up. The future of this country rests on the people. The future of your car should rest with CarShield administrators. Call CarShield before it's too late. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in costs for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantees. Call 800-453-5896. 800-453-5896. Quick crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty. <coughs> oh, hey, Lexus. Beck Reeves, PI. Beck Reeves, PI. Yeah, Lexus Littlefoot. Big money management. You should already know who I am. I'm a money manager, and I'm looking for people that are money. <laughs> Wait, there's no number on here. Yeah, I only give my number to people that are money. <laughs> nah. Back here at Derby City Wrestling with the show stealer, Rocco Bellagio and Hope Elijah Burke. Now guys, you have championship aspirations here at the United Wrestling Network and especially in Derby City Wrestling. How are you feeling about that? And how do you guys plan on taking that championship to you? The no doubt standout, Rocco Bellagio, steals every show he's in. Now if you remember back to the first show, who were the first two faces? of Derby City Wrestling. Yeah, these two, Rocco Bellagio and the Pope. Well, tonight, Rocco Bellagio faces the Pope for the first time ever in that ring. And Pope, I love you, baby, but it ain't gonna stop me tonight from putting on one hell of a show and kicking your ass. Pope, oh, response? Well then, uh, first things first, Rocco Pope agrees with you. I understand where we are, and we have a great opportunity in front of us. But before this show, Pope was eating a little lollipop. And as I was eating that lollipop, I got to the center of it, and you know what came to my mind. What came to Pope's mind was that yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. But right now, today, it's a gift. That's why we call it the present. 
And everybody, Pope not moved on from the past. I ain't worried about Dylan took care of him and he's gone. Yeah. Now you stand before Pope and we are going to do what we do by giving the fans of Durban yeah. City Wrestling the biggest gift they can have, Daddy. That's yeah. Pope, that's Rocco, yeah. right here, right now, tonight, for Derby City Wrestling. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. The Ace of Space, BHK, is on his way to Louisville, Kentucky, and in one Earth's Week's time, I will be defending my UWN Heritage title once again against you, Aaron Williams. And after last time, I am not taking you lightly, but you have to understand, I am the baddest champion on this or any other planet. So I'll see you next week. End transmission. I love to drive. It's my me time, my getaway, my escape. Nothing can ruin it except for a car breakdown. That's why I called CarShield. CarShield administrators help get those repairs paid. I trust CarShield with my baby, and you should too. CarShield has plans that include protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, entertainment system, air conditioning, electronics, and more. CarShield administrators go the extra mile by including rental car options. You also get emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and courtesy towing all at no additional cost. Darlings, saving on expensive car repairs is just a phone call away. For me, it's a no-brainer. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in costs for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantees. Call 800-284-5872. One West is about opportunity. One West is about honoring our community. One West is about economic development within the West End. From where I've gone to where I am now, there's no way possible without One West that I'll be there. One West is about revitalization. One West building together. Welcome back in the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center. DJ Scary Carry on the ones and twos, keeping the house alive for Derby City Wrestling. Gilbert Corsi alongside Sean Phillips, still to come a huge main event in Rocco Bellagio squaring off against the Pope, Elijah Burke. For many people, Sean, that has been a what would happen if they ever collided type match. Absolutely. These are two friends that are now going to test their abilities. You know, this isn't just beer pong with the buddies. This isn't just a game of cornhole. This is wrestling, where these two are going to step up and see who the better man is. Well, we've been talking about the coming, approaching 15th year anniversary of the United Wrestling Network. Some of the biggest stars in professional wrestling have cut their teeth in the United Wrestling Ring. And so it's time once again to open the vault. Ruby's a serious competitor. I've watched her get in the ring a lot of times. We saw CC Chanel in Championship Wrestling from Hollywood the other day against Vipers. Both of these are tough competitors. Let's see who comes out a little bit more aggressive. We'll have to see if CC Chanel can maybe use some reach and use that kickboxing to attack from angles. You don't want to get tied up in close quarters. You don't want to fight Ruby Rays in the phone booth. Absolutely, you do not want to have an ugly, dirty fight with Ruby where you're inside banging. She wants to keep out at a distance where she's not going to be smothered by all Ruby's size. Well, speaking about the, the height disparity and size disparity between these two women, Ruby, I mean, Cece Chanel, though, look at the smile on her face. We talk about a, a high threshold for adrenaline. She's also got a, a high threshold for BS like this, and she's not one to, as the Aussies would say, bail on a fight. And she's going to bring it to Ruby Race. Yeah, she's also got a high vertical leap to get up there and take over that arm ringer. And you can see some effects. You know, we, we saw in week one, Heather Monroe. You, pain was etched on the face of Camille for the first time. Uh, Ruby Rays is used to just dominating just about every match she's in. She's, in essence, undefeated in the United Wrestling Network. And she's eating some big shots. The legs started to buckle there. Look at CeCe Chanel, though, absolutely vicious as she unleashes a flurry of offense on La Chingona. 
CC did a good job of frustrating Ruby very early on. Ruby got a little bit aggressive, threw some big haymaker punches. CC was able to avoid an encounter. Well, I don't know if this is going to be oh a successful gosh. proposition. Does, does CC Chanel have the strength? I don't know if she's looking for maybe a tiger bomb or a butterfly suplex, but either way, she'd have to be Wonder Woman to pull this off. Looking for some superhuman strength is CC Chanel. The Ruby Rays almost looks peeved like CC Chanel's a gnat flying around. So there, had, had Ruby not gotten as aggressive with that stomp and maybe just done a quick punch, she might have been able to step up to the stomp. That's what a fighting emotionally is going to do. You don't make quite as smart of decisions. Nasty, just thick, thudding chop there. There's no, there's no slap to that. That was like getting hit with the, the branch of an oak tree. And there's the stomp she wanted initially. She got it this time and absolutely measured CC Chanel with that. CC cannot take too much damage like that. That was a big shot. Especially the thundering blows, all the force of a powerhouse like Ray's. Ray's is throwing that 100%. She's mad. She is. Bla she just blasted CC almost out of the ring with that right hand. Well, and you know, you just saw Allison K sending a, a message to Thunder Rosa, and, and you saw, you know, uh, Savoy very aggressive as well, and Ruby Ray's sending a message to everybody in the United Wrestling Network, in the NWA Women's Division, anybody that might come here and try and take on La Chingona. There is definitely a stacked division here on the United Wrestling Network, stacked women's division. No. Hip check Cece Chanel out of her boots. You always hear the old terminology, a million dollar knee lift. That was about a million dollars and 50 cents, a little something extra on that lifted CC Chanel off of the canvas. But again, you talk about not shying away from a fight. I, I love the heart on display of Chanel, but going for the, what is she going for here, guys? CC Chanel, is she looking to pedigree Ruby Rays? Whatever's going on, we have seen two fantastic women's matches back to back. And that's what you can expect here on Primetime Live. Talk us through this uh, punishing submission hold here, Blake. So the big thing we're looking for, again, is the, the knee, it's called a calf slicer, where the, she puts this, the shin in the back of the knee, and that is essentially like a nut in a nut crack, and it almost dislocates the joint. Now she's also using the face, so you're getting a leg attack and a low back slash choke with the pulling up there, almost like an STF, I believe it's called. Rearranging the face here. That fish hook, though, not legal. It just about anywhere, including the MMA, MMA cage. But again, uh, this this Ruby Rays, guys, just has a nasty, nasty mean streak. I mean, she loves to punish her opponent. We're seeing that at the expense here of CC Chanel. CC Chanel, she's got a, a smile sweeter than Aussie Lollies, but we don't want to see it that way. Stretched back inhumanely by La Chigona, Ruby Rays. Trying to cave in the chest of CeCe Chanel. With those shots, those clotheslines, and again, just that ricochet factor of that top rope. I mean, she's getting hit from both ends of, the, of that strike there, Blake. It's just like taking shots on the ground, where when you're standing, your body can absorb it as you get pushed back. But when she was against the ropes or on the ground, you just absorb all of that damage. Kind of like that. Just like that. My gosh, just trying to hot knife through butter. Just trying to chop right through. CC Chanel, look at the effects here. And cho chopping through competition is exactly what Ruby Rays did. She didn't have any challengers left at Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. Now that there's fresh meat on the platter, Ruby Rays is back to demolish. You got people like Heather Monroe that claim to be the queen of Championship Wrestling from Hollywood. You gotta believe a SoCal fixture like Ruby Rays would take umbrage with that and just send a message to everybody. But she's staying in this fight with CC Chanel. Staying alive, and as this match goes into deep water, conditioning could become a factor here. 100%, so one of the things Ruby's been doing, she's been doing a lot of damage to CC thus far, but beating somebody up is exhausting. And we might see Ruby start to slow down after all the offense she's thrown at CC. Might have punched herself out here, guys, and now using that distance, using the reach, as I talked about in the opening seconds, using that speed downstairs into the midsection, upstairs with the clothesline. She got her off her feet. She took her down. Reyes isn't used to that. Is she going to put her away? No, close call. Could have been a huge upset in the favor of CeCe Chanel. Oh, follows up. Huge knee. She's rocked here. She's rocked Blake, and she's down. Ruby's down. A little wobbly, but she's getting up. 
See, we see the fatigue. Ruby's slowing down. She still has offense, but it's coming a little slower. And as a result, the faster CC Chanel is able to avoid it in Counter-Strike. Oh, no. Went for it again. The third time is not going to be the charm. Devastating. Oh, my gosh. Forget it. This thing is over a million times over. Whoa. They might need to get a stretcher out here for CC. If you're afraid to offend, you can't be honest. That's Thomas Paine, a leader in the American Revolution. CarShield, America's most trusted auto protection company, spells out what's protected in coverage plans for your vehicle. If your vehicle is out of warranty, all you have to do is call before your car breaks down. CarShield preserves your right to save on repairs or replacements for major parts and systems, while protecting your freedom to choose your mechanic or dealer for one affordable pay-as-you-go rate a rate that will never go up. The future of this country rests on the people. The future of your car should rest with CarShield administrators. Call CarShield before it's too late. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in cost for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantees. Call 800-453-5896. 800-453-5896. Your main event this week on Derby City Wrestling is brought to you by One West, the economic development engine of Louisville's West End. Building an inclusive and vibrant West End for all of Louisville to live, shop, work, dine, and play. Learn more at onewest.org. Introducing first, from the Jersey Shore, weighing in at 278 pounds, Rocco Bellagio! Rocco Bellagio put on about good solid 10 pounds of muscle from the last time that we saw him. He walks to the ring laser focused on getting another shot at the United World Championship. The committee telling Rocco he must go through all the top competitors, Sean, on the United roster, and thus he is stepping into the ring with a long time very good friend in a first time meeting with Elijah Burke. Look, look at me, Daddy, you looking at the truth. And his opponent from Jacksonville, Florida, weighing in at 263 pounds. He is the former NWA World Television Champion. Elijah Burke is an elite competitor, a champion on any day of the week. This is going to be a blockbuster main event, John Phillips. To my friends at home, tweet your friends, call your family, tell them to turn on the United Wrestling Network because we got a big fight night in store. Absolutely. You get Rocco Bellagio versus an individual who has over 20 years of professional wrestling experience. He's been across the world. He's been in different professional wrestling companies. And right now, we are going to get to see him live at the Norton Healthcare Sports and Learning Center at the United Wrestling Network, Derby City Wrestling. Rocco Bellagio coming in off the summer showcase, had a very good showing out in California in the Golden Opportunity Tournament, just a, a really just a fraction of a second away from advancing to the finals and Golden Opportunity picked up some vic victories out there as well. Yeah, Rocco definitely meant business whenever he stepped in the United Wrestling Network. He was he was not just here to take part. He was here to take over, and he's doing a very good job with that. Well, we've told the story about Rocco Bellagio did not compete during the pandemic. He put back on the boots for the first time in three years when he stepped into the ring here in the United Wrestling Network. And what is going through these two guys' minds? Because, again, Rocco and, <laughs> Rocco and Pope we're on the first interview in the first episode in the first five minutes of Derby City Wrestling. They had no idea in that moment that a few months later, 
they'd be squaring off toe to toe as opponents. And absolutely, and and the crowd is getting riled up here for these two to go right at it. And it's going to be interesting because these guys are friends. These guys have been on many a shows together. Mm -hmm. They've worked together. So now it's going to be interesting. They know each other's playbook. They know what each person brings to the table. Well, speaking of knowing somebody's playbook, everybody knows that Rocco Bellagio is a big power, high impact type competitor. And we're going to see it from Pope if he can bring the speed, the quickness, that prowess that he has from his amateur boxing and professional boxing career as he grabs the wrist of Rocco Bellagio. You know, I I'm going to wonder where the fans sit on this matchup. These are two of the more popular competitors in Derby City, in Louisville, perhaps of all time, Sean. No, you're definitely not wrong. As we're tied up here, Rocco has the, and I think we're going to see a lot of this. I think even though Rocco Bellagio has the strength, he's got the power advantage. I think the Pope here has the experience. He might have the prowess, and we're going to see a really, really good closer matchup than we're thinking. And Pope just bounced off of Rocco Bellagio like a pebble hitting the ground. Absolute brick let, let me be very clear. Elijah Burke is every bit of 235, 240 pounds. That's a very he, large pebble. He's not, <laughs> he's not a small man by any means whatsoever. These two go to lock up. Again, that little bit of speed from Elijah Burke as he takes the back here, goes for the waist lock. And so you talked about Pope and his boxing background. This may be a stick and move type situation when he is in the ring with ruthless Rocco Bellagio. Absolutely. You've got to stick and move when you're staring 350 pounds in the face. And a smile on the face of Rocco Bellagio as he sends his friend into the corner. Of course, we know that Rocco is Louisville's longest reigning heavyweight champion. Bellagio saying that he owns the Derby City. He's now trying to expand his footprint to own the United Wrestling Network, but Rocco is giving the sign, perhaps sensing victory. He calls that choke slam the payoff. And is Pope going for the ride this early in the match, Sean? I wouldn't be surprised if we see it. But a quick flip, a quick jump, and Elijah Burke has an opportunity to get himself back on top, and it might have been short-lived. We talked about how these guys know each other's playbook, and Pope is staying three steps ahead and smart. Smart move by the battle-tested ring veteran in Elijah Burke, chopping down the tree trunk-like legs of Rocco Bellagio. Absolutely. When we see these kind of matchups, when we see the smaller guy get the advantage over the bigger guy, it comes to the knees, the knees. That's what he's got to work on. That's what he's got to focus on here. And if Elijah Burke can take the legs out from underneath Rocco Bellagio, he really has a chance in this matchup. And because when you're six foot five and close to 280 as Rocco weighed in tonight, the power comes from your base. And so if you can take out the wheels, you take out the strength of Rocco Bellagio. As Pope continues to punish that left leg of Rocco Bellagio. And Pope knew that. Absolutely. I mean, that just comes with the experience. That's the prowess. And I said, Elijah Burke has found found his reserves, he is tapped in, he is bringing this crowd alive. Friendship set aside, Pope's here for business. Pope saying, I'm not a stepping stone, my friend. Absolutely. You want a world title shot, you're gonna have to earn it. These are two brothers that are fighting while mom and dad are not at home. He's my boy. <laughs> the Pope reminds the crowd, this is my boy, and sorry about your knee, I hope you have good insurance. Picking apart. Rocco Bellagio's leg like an orthopedic surgeon. And he is Rocco Bellagio just booting away, trying to create some space between himself and the Pope. That's a nice heavy shot to the gut. We just said it right there. These aren't as heavy as they could be without that base behind him. You know, Rocco's been nearly unstoppable on the United Wrestling Network. He took Danny Limelight to task in our, our debut television event. He defeated the mercenary Garrison Creed. He defeated Big Hoss out in Hollywood. He defeated Shane Mercer. And he, he defeated Shane Mercer after being thrown over the rope. Derby City Wrestling continues. I love to drive. It's my me time, my getaway, my escape. Nothing can ruin it. 
except for a car breakdown. That's why I called CarShield. CarShield administrators help get those repairs paid. I trust CarShield with my baby, and you should too. CarShield has plans that include protection on major parts and systems like the engine, transmission, entertainment system, air conditioning, electronics, and more. CarShield administrators go the extra mile by including rental car options. You also get emergency services for flat or damaged tires, lockouts, dead batteries, and courtesy towing, all at no additional cost. Darlings, saving on expensive car repairs is just a phone call away. For me, it's a no-brainer. Protect yourself from the unprecedented rise in costs for parts and repairs. Call now to save money with your price lock guarantee. Call 800-284-5872. Wrestling Network, Derby City Wrestling on the air as the Pope goes high risk and finds a big reward on Rocco Bellagio. Man of that time, cover here, and he can only find two. And a kick out from Rocco Bellagio, who grasped that left knee of his that the Pope has been working on this entire match. Now going for Rocco Bellagio's neck. Trying to make Rocco suck wind again when you're a big guy. Uh, endurance becomes an issue. And a nice rear naked choke as he is making Rocco work for it. Rocco trying to bring this crowd back into it, bring himself back to life, but it's going to be a tall order here to get up underneath that damaged leg. And so you're sitting at home saying, I thought Rocco and Pope were friends. You're right. They are, but it is Rocco who wants another world title match, and thus the committee has told him he must go through all the top competitors in the United Wrestling Network. Well, the Pope is a champion and elite competitor on anybody's roster. And as Rocco Bellagio has worked his way up with a couple of shots to the Pope, but again, the Pope using his mind, using that experience, taking down the legs of Rocco Bellagio. Takes deep breaths here. Pope is starting to slow in his press, and that's a bit unusual. Again, Pope knows what he's doing in the ring here. And do we think that might be because these guys are friends? You know, when brothers fight, maybe after one of them gets a little bit of a beating, you know, the other one lays off. Let's them know, like, we're still brothers. They say all's fair in love, and we're all's fair in love in wrestling, right? And, and Elijah Burke knows that as he locks in the figure four on the tree trunk-like legs of ruthless Rocco Bellagio. Is Bellagio going to tap? Can he get his shoulders off the mat? And Rocco is screaming here in pain. But I, I think we both know Rocco well enough. I don't think he's going to stay on the mat. I don't necessarily think he's going to tap. I think Rocco's going to go out before he gives up like that. Riving, you said seething. I'll say riving in pain. Rocco knows he's got to turn it the opposite direction to shoot the pressure back the other way. And he's done it. And now it is Pope, who's close enough to the ropes. Oh, wow, what a smart move. Again, bring veterans know where they're at inside the squared circle at all times. Absolutely. Sean. Just being on top, reversing the pressure from Rocco was very short-lived, and it didn't do enough damage. As you can see, Elijah Burke is back up, and he's ready to do some more work. Yeah, Rocco can barely stand on that leg. Hunting down his prey, it seems. Elijah Burke is making Rocco work for it. He's reminding him, you're my boy. I'm sorry about what's about to happen. You're my, you're, you're my friend, but there is no friendship. There can only victories, be one. And victories on the line. Are we about to see some fist of fury here? I but it's conflicted. I, that may be a conflicted look from Pope. A hundred percent. But Rocco was not conflicted at all. Pope delayed looking down at his friend writhing in pain, and Rocco took advantage of it. Second guessed himself in the corner there, and now Rocco has the advantage, trying to slap some life into that knee as he gets himself right back into this. He's trying to get this crowd here at the Norton Healthcare Center right behind him as he's reaching for the foot of the Pope. Listen, I don't say this very often, but that was a mistake by Pope, in my opinion. Showing that moment of compassion, showing that moment of humanity, now has him on the defense. Absolutely, and there's a little bit of life here. He's got enough wind in his sail to not fall down on that knee. Rocco swinging a miss. Upside down, inside out, and Pope is seeing stars, Sean. Absolutely, and Rocco Bellagio 
reaching for that knee. Again, he knows. He knows he's taking a beating, and if he's going to finish this off, this is where Rocco needs to be back on top of Pope. He's taking too much time. Showing the sign to the fans in the Norton Center for the choke slam. Showing the sign. <laughs> His signature of the move, the way he wins matches, the payoff, as he calls but it. Look, but look, as Rocco is grabbing for that knee, I don't know if he's going to have enough energy if that knee's gonna be too bothersome, if he can even get the Pope up for this choke slam. You know, Pope showed Rocco a bit of compassion. Do you think that Rocco would do the same thing? I think at this point, Rocco's just ready to get to the back. I think that knee is bothersome, and there's no compassion from Pope. He knows what he has to do. Some elbows landed straight to the back of the neck. Well, that's a long way up, and it feels like an even further way down if you're on the receiving end. So Pope said, compassion, friendship be damned. I gotta save my own life here with the elbow drop One. right on the chest. And Marco Bellagio is still alive in this fight. And the Pope in disbelief. How is his friend staying in it? What does the Pope have to do? It looks like he's getting these fans behind him here, and that might be what it needs for him to take it to Rocco. The chant. The faithful here in the Norton Center chanting, rallying behind Pope. I wonder whose side he would be on. They would be on there, clearly on the side of uh, Elijah Burke, but the payoff connects. The payoff connects, but unfortunately for Rocco. So much damage has been done, he can't. Precious seconds are taking away, Sean. Absolutely, as he is in very clear pain. He was able to get Pope up. He was able to bring him down, but Why? he's coming down with Why? it. We talked about the power base. Where does the power in a big man come from? The legs. Rocco had to use everything in his tank to hoist up the Pope, but precious seconds it's ticked by, and he could only get two and a half. He can't scoop the leg. He couldn't get his body on top of him. He, Pope had what he needed to kick out, and guess what? Elijah Burke slowly getting up here, slowly finding his win. That's why this was a smart battle strategy for Elijah Burke to take out the legs, to take out the power base of the much larger Rocco Bellagio. Rocco is writhing in pain. He can barely stand. He's going for another one. Not today. Goes for the whip. Uh-oh. Referee Daniel Spencer has found himself at the wrong place at the wrong time. Face full of Pope is going to send him crashing to the mat. But mind you, this is where things are getting interesting. These are two friends. Are we going to see any funny business? Oh, Rocco didn't just hit the turnbuckle. He hit the steel post on the opposite side of the turnbuckle. And a mighty uppercut from Elijah Burke. The right. former Golden Glove boxer. 100 victories as an amateur fighter just jacked the jaw of Rocco Bellagio. And Elijah Burke tuning up the band here, going for Rocco. Hold on, wait a minute, what's Dylan Bostic? What's Dylan Bostic doing here? And what's in his hand? Are those, are those quarters? Is that a, a quarters? And Pope is out. Pope is knocked out. Pope is out. Dylan Bostic getting the ref back up on his feet. And Rocco Bellagio or the ref, then neither of them have any idea what happened here, Sean. And look, Rocco barely has a hand over the Pope whose shoulders are down. Is that a cover? That's it? Here is your winner, Rocco Bellagio. What kind of travesty and shame is this? Let's go back and take another look at the closing minutes of this contest. Out comes Dylan Bostic. Pope is getting, looking like he's going to win this matchup, and bam! right to the face with the roll of quarters, a thunderous like shot. And if we can come back here to the ring, Rocco's just figuring out, he's seen these quarters and Sean Rocco's just figuring out what's happening. Rocco Bellagio not happy. No, he's not happy at all. This is, Rocco wanted to win. Rocco wants to get another shot at the world title, but Rocco didn't want to beat his friend this way. Low down, dirty Dylan Bostic comes into play yet again in Derby City Wrestling. We're out of time, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week.